Hello everyone, welcome back to Ickleton Golf Club. My name is Jack Lee, I'm a short game specialist down here at Ickleton. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what makes a good bunker player. And if you're not currently one, by the end of this video, I'm hoping you'll have more of an idea on how to be. Let's get into it. Right, so hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jack, this is Jack Lee Golf. If this is your first time round here, if you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure you do so because I'm on my way to 5,000 subscribers. Like I said, in today's video, we're talking bunkers. So if you're someone that's struggling out of bunkers currently, <coughs> badger, um, listen up, yeah? So, first um, misconception that I believe a few people have, especially this is what I see on the lesson uh, front, we notice that a lot of people's ball positions gets a little bit too far forward. Now, the reason why I say this, we have got a job to deliver the loft on this golf club to the back of this golf ball, roughly about an inch behind it. By having your ball position too far forward, what that encourages is that you are going to bottom this club out too early. Depending on the depth of sand, if you're in a bunker like this one that's not got a load of sand in it, it's got an adequate amount, but it's not plush by any means. Uh, what could happen is that if your club bottoms out early here, it can then hit the bottom of the bunker and then start to rise, and that's where the sculled bunker shot comes from, or certainly one instance of it. Similarly, if you're in a bunker that's got a load of sand and you were to deliver it too far behind it, then we're gonna go right underneath it and that ball's probably not gonna get out of that bunker. So, first and foremost, let's not have this ball position too far forward, let's start to wedge it back a little bit. I as a rule of thumb tend to have my ball position just further forward of center in my stance because I find this gives me the best chance of delivering that club into the right spot in the sand one cool way that you guys will be able to determine where your ball position should be get yourself in a bunker hit that sand if you're finding that it's somewhere near here that you want to make contact with that sand that for me is the best place to have your ball position that's going to be a rare case obviously and I don't I'd prefer people to work from central to slightly further forward but if you're struggling locating the right point in that sand that is how you manage to find it so for me like I said I'm going to go just further forward than centre and hit a nice bunker shot again just forward to centre bit more sand that time that's come out nice cool so first and foremost get that ball position correct Right, now that brings us nicely on to how height is created in a bunker. So if you're someone that does not hit it very high, uh, here are a couple of potential reasons why. Now, one massive thing that I would encourage you to do when it comes to hitting bunker shots is starting with a lot of loft on your golf club and then retaining a lot of loft. So what do I mean by that? We set up with a face that is very square. What I want you to do from there is twist it open so it's at about one, two o'clock. Not only does that expose a little bit of bounce, which is going to help you get this ball out of the bunker, it also adds a bit of loft to your golf club. From here, it'd be a great shame, having started with a lot of loft, if you were to put a twist of that golf club in that takes it away. If you ever notice, if you ever get a chance to film yourself, and you see that this club is pointed down to the ground, that is an instance where you're taking loft off that golf club and might mean that you have to lean that shaft forward to get it out of this bunker, and that is not what we want to do. So. A little idea for you, once it's twisted open to start with, I want you to feel as though by the time it gets to just over halfway back in your backswing, if there were a camera on this club face, I want you to feel as though it's pointing straight at you. And then similarly on the way through, let's retain all that loft and feel as though again, that camera is still pointing towards our face. So if you want it good bunker shots, think about taking selfies. That's me. That's my little condensed tip here today. So uh, face open to start with. Let's feel as though we're keeping that face open. We've got a lot of loft into impact and we're then feeling as though we're pointing that camera or that club face back at us. Let's retain that loft. Let's hit it nice and high. Grip wise, something that is going to help you maintain that open face, if we were to move our grip a little bit weaker, so what I mean by that is imagine that our hands were twisted this way as a right handed golfer, and we get them going under the grip this way, it's a lot easier for us to want to twist that face closed than it is open, I can barely get it open there. So, a little guide for you, when you're putting your left hand on, if you're a right handed golfer, this is the opposite if you're left handed, make sure you can see maybe one knuckle, so it's definitely in a weaker position, and then when we're placing our right hand on top, feel as though we create this V with our thumb and our forefinger, and it either point straight back into our sternum or even to our left shoulder. Now that again is weak, but it's only going to help us maintain a twist open of this club face, which is going to help you do a lot of good stuff, like expose that bounce and maintain that loft. Now, unfortunately, it could be the case that you're doing everything so far absolutely perfect, but the one thing letting you down is the fact that you take too much sand. So we're gonna put a little bit of a drill in place now that's gonna help you, one, determine if you're doing that, and two, make sure that you take the 
perfect amount of sand. There never really is a perfect amount of sand, but uh, a more appropriate amount of sand, let's say. So, you may have seen this drill before. It's called the line drill. So we draw a line in the sand. Now, one um, way that you may have seen this drill used before is to make sure that we get our lowest point at a, in a better place. And that goes very much hand in hand with one of the first things that we spoke about earlier when it comes to ball position. So great to check that. But similarly, if you're noticing that your low point is really good, but we take a hell of a lot of sand and, and we'll notice that the depth of our divot is really, really deep. It's also a good way of checking that the depth of our arc is not too deep. If it were to be, especially in a bunker which has got a lot of sand in, you go straight underneath it, stays in the bunker again. So we've also got, as well as making sure we're hitting that line, we've also got a good indicator as to how much sand we're going to take. Now, when you're doing this drill, what I'd advise you to do, have a couple of swings and really get a measure of how uh, different swings feel and how little or much sand you can take. So I will start off by trying to take one grain. Almost, almost missed it. And that's the aim of the game with this one. Second one were perfect. Then I'm gonna work it down just a little bit so I take the shallowest of divots. Bit better. Then I'm gonna work it so this is more like my natural sand contact. And then lastly, I'm gonna go deep. I'm gonna go underneath it. Now by practicing the height of your art, not only is it gonna help you when it comes to varying sand conditions, but also it's gonna make you more skilled as a golfer. If you know uh, and you can repeatedly practice different measures, you're only gonna find it easier when it comes to your standard traditional bunker shot. So I've just had to go at four different depths of arc there. Uh, I think I've got a good idea of where the perfect one is. Uh, if that is the case, let's see if I can get a decent bunker shot now. Perfect, that's about a foot away. So you don't know, so you don't know I'm fibbing as well. I told you, because sometimes on these videos, people are like, and that's about three foot away. And, and that one, that one actually is a foot away. The last thing that I want to talk to you about in today's video is the release. Now, we did briefly touch upon it when it come to how to control the loft of the golf club. When we think about that selfie stick idea, whatever you want to call it, getting into this position here, you'll notice that the club has overtaken my hands and we've got that loft pointing back up to my face. Now, in order to achieve that, I imagine that there's a race going off between the head and the handle. And as you would notice in this instance, the head has beat the handle to the golf ball. If we were to drag that handle and move it this way, we're noticing that that club is de-lofted. We're noticing that, that leading edge is probably gonna to wanna to interact with the sand first and it's a recipe for not so good bunker shots. So, feel as though we've got that twist of the face open and then as we come to deliver it, the head is gonna overtake the handle so we can get it into that kind of a position. That last move that I made then was probably a bit of an exaggeration, but if we were to do that, we're only gonna expose more loft, use more pounce. Things that are going to help hit that bunker shot close. Let's give it a go. Nice. So we saw a decent place of divot, we saw a decent depth of divot, we saw adequate height on the shot, we saw it come out quite nice and it's again about three, four foot away. So, so they are some tips when it comes to getting out of bunkers. If you're someone that is struggling with your bunker technique, please try and implement a few of these because I think you'll have a good bit of success with them. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you're doing the usuals, liking, sharing, subscribing. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. I do like getting into bunkers sometimes because I'm a bit weird that way. Apart from that, stay tuned for the next video coming. It'll be out in a couple of days. I won't make you wait too long. Uh, this has been Ace. We should do it more often. Thanks. Thanks again. I'll see you soon, I guess. Hopefully.